Uh, thanks for joining us today. I guess that was our little April Fool's joke for today. And um, so we're going to talk a little bit about Girl Scouts at Home. And um, our agenda this evening, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how the, the webinar works because we've got a lot of new people on tonight. And thank you for coming. And we're going to also talk about how to connect with your troop, um, some resources that are coming out from Girl Scouts of Central Maryland, um, some other resources from Girl Scouts of the USA, and then also we're just kind of kind of do a little check-in and a Q&A at the end. If at any point in time you have any questions, you can insert that into the um, into the chat log. And so everyone's on mute. Um, and so if everyone could just take a make it. Um, so because we have so many people, um, we want everyone to be on mute so that we can reduce any kind of background noises that we have. If you have friends that can't be with us tonight, the webinar will be recorded. And we're also going to be putting it on our um, the on the GSCM webpage. There's this new site that we'll talk about a little bit later. That's called Girl Scouts at Home. We're going to pause throughout the webinar to address questions where you see this this little stop sign here. All right. So how are you going to ask a question? For those of you that don't know, over on the right hand side, there's a little place where you can type your message. Um, you can enter in a smiley face or say hello. And so for those of you that are just checking in, because I see we got some new people coming in, because can everybody hear me? So I'd like to see some smiley faces today. So can you hear us? All right. I see some thumbs up coming. All right. Oh, someone's laughing. That's good. Trying to keep our wits about us today. All right. So we're going to move on. All right. So today's presenters, um, we have with us Jennifer Stolte, who's the Director of Membership and Retention, and she's waving up there on the screen. And um, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Sylvia Steverak Pruden, and I'm um, a Membership and Retention Manager. And we have a couple of volunteers um, joining us today. Um, uh, first, I can see Heather on the screen. Um, Denise, I can't see you. Can you kind of say hello? Uh, we'll, let, we'll wait. The camera on it says it's only allowed to have three webcams at a time. So, um, okay, very good. So I'll get off when you get on. How's that? All right, hold on. Let's see Denise here. I'm coming. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. Hang on. There I am. Hello. Okay, very good. So there you know what Denise looks like. And uh, she'll she'll be joining us in a bit to, to talk about some exciting things she's doing. All right, I'll put trip. you back on now. So, <laughs> okay, very good. All right. All right. So we're working it out together. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about how to stay connected with your troop. And, um, and we're going to start with... Um, uh, our volunteer, Heather, who um, has uh, some experience with Google Hangouts. And um, so she can just talk about her experience and uh, what worked for with her and what did not. So I'm handing it over to Heather. Hi, everybody. I am a leader of a split level troop. I have uh, 12 fourth grade juniors and nine second grade brownies. And we normally meet on separate days anyway. So um, during the shutdown, I started out using Google Hangouts to meet with my juniors and my brownies. It is a free app for both Android and Apple phones. Um, there is no time limit on the video calls. They, you can have up to, I believe, 150 people in a group. And I believe up to 50 people on a call when you're doing a call, the most 10 active people will line up along the bottom. I think we have a screenshot in a few yep. slides that'll show that. Um, I liked Google Hangouts because it was a great way to set up groups for both of my age groups. Um, so for instance, with my fourth grade juniors, it works well because when I set up a group, it's like a permanent group in Google Hangouts. So throughout the week or anytime, anybody in that group can get on there and send a text to everybody or communicate with each other. It's an ongoing group in Google Hangouts. Um, so I found that useful. It's not like a one-time thing. Um, and it also works well for families who may not be on Facebook. 
I know some of my fourth graders already do like Facebook Messenger with their friends, but not everybody's on there. And a lot of my second graders, are, I don't believe are on there yet as kind of an age thing at that point. So Google Hangouts is good because it's, it's pretty safe. Uh, it's pretty well known. Families are, feel comfortable getting on it who might not be comfortable getting on Facebook or maybe some other social apps. So this picture here is um, how I've set up my two groups. I have my brownies in one group, my juniors in another group. And I could go on there and say, hey, everybody, let's get together Thursday at 7 and start a call with each other. And people can chime in and throughout the week. I also think this would be something really useful, especially with my juniors, when we start working on our bronze award project, that I could set up a group for the girls who are working on a project together and they can communicate even when we're not meeting in person. So I really, I think this is very uh, valuable for that kind of aspect, the Google Hangouts. Um, let's see, yep, my junior girls, I had 10 on the call that night. Um, their internet experience was helpful. Like I mentioned, a lot of the girls had already been on Facebook Messenger or, or had been in chat rooms. So they kind of understood the social cues in Google Hangouts, to my knowledge, as the host, I don't have a way um, to mute everybody or to control the chat room because it's, it's more of a hangout room and not a meeting like a webinar or Zoom. So I don't have any way to mute everybody. So the juniors, they did okay, not talking over each other. We didn't have that much background interference. My brownies, I did not have such a successful meeting with them on Google Hangouts. Uh, some of their volumes were too high or they may not have been as familiar with the social cues of like not talking over each other or that kind of stuff. And I will admit it was my first time using Google Hangouts with them. So I also floundered at, at how to corral the conversation and everything. So I would definitely continue using Google Hangouts with my fourth grade juniors and up. My second graders, I would probably use an easier format. Um, that they'll speak to more later in this webinar that I think would be more interesting, better to use with that age group. And there's a picture of Google Hangouts when I did it with my juniors. Um, I'm sorry, video calls limit to 25, not 50 people. But you can see um, everybody's on the bottom there. And that's about all the controls, though. It doesn't have any other controls like in some of the other meeting platforms where you can do other fun things like sharing screens and uh, muting people or stuff like that. So Google Hangouts is really good for hanging out. But if doing an actual meeting, I'm, I would maybe look for another uh, platform. And um, I think at that, I will. That's a good segue. Over. So Sylvia, I'm assuming I'm <laughs> up next. Um, so yeah, we use, I, I'm Denise and I have a, a troop of sixth and seventh graders. And um, so I guess that's a good thing that they're very tech savvy and know their way around their, you know, iPads and computers. Well, I'm going to just um, st see if I can steal your screen a second. Um, Cause I just put together something a little bit um, that we're able to see my screen. If you can see my screen, can you see it, Heather? No, it's not up yet. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm still fighting with it. Here it comes. It's thinking. I also am fighting for bandwidth in my house with five kids. So Anyway, I'll just keep talking and when it decides it wants to come up, I will allow it. Zoom for our um, troop meetings. We've actually used a couple different things over the last few weeks. Um, Zoom really well. It's a free app. The, the free version of Zoom allows you and um, but it does give you uh, 40 minutes of meeting time that you can have with your girls. And um, it allows you to do such things as share your screen. You can mute the other participants. Um, if you wanna just present for a little bit without them sharing, you can unmute them. The host has the control. Um, 
You also can do breakout rooms. We're working on our Amaze journey. So um, we were able to, like, I gave the girls a question or a scenario they needed to work through. And then I was able to put them into a breakout room to, uh, to go discuss it among themselves and um, gave them a minute in the breakout room and then was able to pull them back into the larger group, which um, is, a, is, a, is a good feature of Zoom. Um, so you also can, um, I would recommend when you go into the settings of Zoom, my screen is completely frozen up, so I'm hoping you can still hear me. If you can't, just throw something up in the chat. But um, in the, um, sorry, in the Zoom meeting, you can uh, change your settings so that they can't uh, do any type of annotation. Annotation is when they can actually write on their screen, which my girls being in sixth and seventh grade thought it was hysterical that they could draw pictures over the slides that I was presenting. So I learned very quickly how to turn that off so that they couldn't do that anymore. Um, I wish I could get my slides up there. I'm sorry. We also using with our using Zoom, I also incorporate um, different polls. We use what's poll everywhere is also a free app. It does have limited, um, you know, restrictions on the free version. It just gives you the basic plan, but poll everywhere um, is a way that I can poll the girls or quiz the girls on different things during the presentation and using their phone, they can just um, text their response in and you can get up to, up to the minute responses from them. So we did one tonight on um, peer pressure and how peer pressure makes them feel and things like that. And they could send their um, text in and it came up on the screen without having to speak. So they could be totally honest. I wouldn't know who the answers came from. They could share from their hearts type of thing. Um, we also use um, Survey Monkey, which is also another free platform. And Survey Monkey, I use to send out to the girls, um, for example, for the interact challenge for their journey. Um, a lot of it is quizzing, and a lot of them is getting their opinions on different things like clicks and peer pressure and things like that. So I can develop a, a quick poll for them to, or quick survey that I then text them link on their phones, and they can then respond that way. and um, we can then talk about their responses at our next meeting. So there are two fun apps that you use, um, SurveyMonkey or Poll Everywhere. Uh, Qualtrics is another one that has a survey app. So if you're not familiar with it, Q-U-A-L-T-R-I-C-S, I think, Qualtrics. There is a free version of that also. It, a little bit of a learning curve, but um, it's not too hard to get the hang of. I think if you were going to use any of those apps, SurveyMonkey is probably the easiest to use, and you could just send out the link to the um, to the survey um, through through text if you if you correspond with your girls by text. Um, if you don't, I send it to the parents, or I'll post it on our troop Facebook page, or send it in emails, and you know tell the parents, hey. Let, have your daughter take five minutes to do this survey type of thing. I think one of my scouts is grounded and got her phone taken away, so we're dealing with that. Um, we also tried the other night uh, an app, which is also free, called House Party. Um, it is You download it on your phone or on your iPad, and it's a video chat. So you are limited to eight people at a time. So if you have a larger troop than eight people, you won't be able to fit them all on the screen. Your house will be full. They can't get in. But um, on House Party, you can you can just do a video chat one on one, and then you can play games like Apple to Apple or like uh, Pictionary. You can draw pictures using your your finger and play games that way. So they're just ways that we've stayed connected um, during this time. We usually meet every two weeks, and uh, when I ask the girls if they wanted to, you know, we'll see in two weeks, they're all like, no, they didn't want to wait two weeks. I think they just want some type of normalcy in their life during this time. So we've been meeting weekly. Um, um, and it's just just fun to connect with them and just using um, Zoom and Poll Everywhere and uh, Survey Monkey, Qualtrics, and House Party has made it a lot easier for us. And I think I'm totally locked up. I'm not quite sure if you've heard any of that. Sorry, Sylvia, we cannot hear you. 
Um, I'm not sure whether I was even heard at all. My my screen was frozen the entire time. Yeah, I heard you. you. Yeah, we heard you. And um, and the people in the audience heard you as well. And Denise, if you can um, st try to stop screen sharing so we can get the presentation back, that'd be great. Um, I'm going to read through some of the questions that we have here while we're waiting for that. Um, somebody wanted to know if there was a participant limit for the number on Zoom. And so do you know if there's a participant lim limit? I wanted to say I thought it was 50, but... Um, did I lose Denise? I'm not sure. I, I think somebody said they saw it on the side as a hundred. Okay. For All, Zoom. Right. All right. I, um, Oh, someone said I use, I use zoom today and it's 100. All right. Okay. So I'm hoping that I am so sorry. Back. Can you hear me? Um, if not, we'll have to, um, go to plan B. Okay, yeah, I'm so sorry. I like I, I can hear you. Can you I'm hear fighting me? my kids for bandwidth, and I'm sure it's uh my internet service is screaming for mercy. There we go. All right, thank you so much. And um, let's see. Oh, you're welcome. All right, Sylvia. I'm, I'm going through some of these questions here. Um, I was I wanted to add one more thing about Zoom, if I could. Mm -hmm. I noticed, um, I actually, after the webinar that we did, um, and Denise talked about Zoom last week, I actually use Zoom with my juniors, and I'm going to do it with my brownies tomorrow. I noticed that there is a 40-minute free limit if you have the free Zoom program, but we figured out that if you write down your meeting number, and it, it'll kick you out automatically at 40 minutes, it usually gives you a warning, like you have 10 minutes left. Um, and it'll just shut off at 40 minutes though automatically. But if you just click and hit join meeting and put back in the meeting ID, you can jump right back into the meeting and kind of keep, keep going. So I told all of my girls, you know, when we get kicked out at 40 minutes, type back in the meeting ID and we all just popped right back in. So you could use Zoom for longer than 40 minutes as long as everybody knows to type back in the meeting ID. Okay, that's a great tip to have. Um, I don't see any other questions um, at this point in time. So we're going to move on forward. Um, the one thing that I, when I looked at Zoom, we've been using Zoom at, 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 as well at work. And um, if there's something that you don't know how to do, there is a great um, video trainings that they have. And some of them are only two minutes or so, but it's great because it quickly walks you through um, what, um, what it is that you're trying to do. Um, and so I don't know a lot of you, if you've heard, but there's some Zoom safety issues. There's this new thing that's called Zoom bombing. Um, and so um, we just wanted to talk a little bit about the safety with Zoom. And so one of the things is that I think most of you are probably going to be using this for troop meetings. So the number of invitations that you're going to send out will be a small number. And um and so they're, they're, you're probably not posting it on any open forums or any websites that, so that's set, setting you up right there very well. Um, each Zoom that you do should have a unique meeting ID um, so that people can't figure out what that ID is. Um, so that if you're having a meeting on Tuesday and the meeting on Thursday that you're gonna have should have a different ID. Um, at the, as a presenter or a, the owner of the, the pro, or, leader of the meeting, um, you should be able to disable guest screen sharing, um, uh, but you can designate people to co-host with you if you're looking for someone else to present. And so if you um, if you leave it open, then anybody can share the screen. And then if you're inviting people from outside, um, this is where it becomes a little bit dicey because then um, if the wrong person gets um, the ability to um, share your screen, um, then who knows what they might be putting up there. Um, there's also another setting that's called join before the host. Um, and as the uh, leader of the meeting, you should have that as off. That way someone can't get in there and set the room, invite a bunch of people that um, don't belong there. Some 
um, you have the option to set up a password um, for anyone that comes to the meeting. And so it, you can use that as an additional security layer if you wish. Um, there's also another thing like the waiting room. Like today, when people came to come to the this webinar, they were waiting until we started screen sharing and, and turned the webinar on. There's a similar process that's uh, also um, there for Zoom. And so um, the plus is, is that you can look and see who's coming to your meeting. Um, but the minus is, is that you have to uh, approve them each one by one before they're allowed to come in. And um, so if you have a small group, that might not be an issue, but if you have people that come in late, it might happen in the middle of your presentation and then it may cause, uh, you may have to pause in order to let those people in. Um, and if there's someone that you, um, if you remove a participant from your um, uh, meeting, um, there's, this there's this setting that you can set, um, allow removed participants to rejoin. So if you remove somebody from the room, this will allow them not to come back in. And so there's a whole, um, the, there's a number of um, sections on, if you Google Zoom, Zoom bombing, you'll find a lot of ways and a lot of tutorials that'll take you through each one of these steps so you can set up your room um, so that it's safe. And um, I'm going to stop here because I got a bunch of questions in the queue here. Um, someone asked me, what platform are we using for this meeting? And we're using Demio. And uh, so that's that's what we're using here. Um, a couple of things that have come up that to make your meeting more successful. Um, one of the things to do is have a parent meeting first. Um, uh, you know, if you got people that are new to technology, people might be leery of like, what is this and how how can people see my house and <laughs> things like that. And so if you have a parents meeting on the platform that you're going to use, um, then it'll give them, um, they'll, they'll understand how it's going to work and they'll see the, the safety procedures that are in place and it'll make them feel more comfortable of having girls come onto social media. Um, and or a webinar platform. And so just like a troop meeting, the girls should probably agree on some meeting rules. Um, so, you know, you, you might have them um, do a brainstorming or, um, and then you can employ one of those polls that Denise was talking about to, to vote on those, on those rules. Um, the other thing is, is that girls may be really new to these webinars and having a number of people that are sharing a screen at a time and, you know, having a chat with your best friend um, is a little bit different than having a chat with 12 of your troop mates. So um, review some etiquette um, so that the girls know um, uh, it's a little bit different than just meeting in a regular room. One of the best things to do is to engage everyone and call the girls by name. And that way they feel like they're included into the group. Um, and so that's also another way to engage them because you can then call on them um, and, 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 and get, get their participation. Um, if you're going to have a um, webinar, um, as kind of as Denise talked about, um, you can have a mix of slides or if videos, and you kind of have to plan it out in an advance so that they're not only just looking at a PowerPoint presentation, but that they're actually having some interaction. So like it, it sounded like Denise had a really great, great way of um, uh, combining this into her um, into her meeting um, because she had some polls and she did some chatting and they broke out into groom, different rooms. And so that it was um, a different way and it wasn't just everyone getting together and viewing a PowerPoint. Um, one of the things that I read, it was uh, I, which I thought was a good suggestion, is that if you're the troop leader and your daughter's attending, see if that you can give your daughter a separate device so that she'll be in there as one of the girls and you'll be in there as a leader. And so there'll be that kind of uh, distance in between you. Um, and, and the other thing is, is that I've heard of people that were doing incorporating their traditions. So they, they all, they all started out with at the beginning with the Girl Scout um, promise. And um, they w did a unique way of uh, maybe doing the peace out Girl Scout at the end. And so um, this is just some tips for you if you're thinking about doing virtual meetings with your girls. Now I see a lot of questions. So I'm going to go just take a moment here. Just give me
has um, printed, um, typed in some hints here. And she said, um, stay muted while in the meeting, unless it's your turn to talk, it'll count cut down on the extra background noise. Um, there will be opportunities for everyone to take turns talking. Um, please keep the chat room to a minimum. We're all here to see and talk with each other. And she also said um, she was using the free version of Zoom. Um, and after 40 minutes, they, um, as Heather said, they used the, the meeting code to get back in. Um, Amy asked if there were any suggested rules. And um, I, I don't know, Amy, the, the first rule that kind of pops into my head is to make sure that, that, that the girls are there and they're not um, showing up to the meeting, but actually working with their phones in the background. Um, and so that um, by engaging them, that's one of the things that, um, that you can do to keep them engaged. Um, but I think that that would be rule number one, I, I would think. And I'm sure that if you, um, if you kind of lay it out for them and say, hey, the, the, the rules are going to, um, things are going to be different because we're not meeting in a room, um, just kind of have a discussion with them and then give them a chance one by one to, to, to suggest any rules that they might have. So oh, someone said, if you get the rest of your family off the Wi-Fi, it will help keep the video from lagging or freezing. Yeah, and I and I think that in some situations there you might have to really try hard to do that. Um, oh, one of the other leaders said, we said nope, taking pictures of the video chat. And um, the other one, someone else said, um, be present, make sure that you limit, limit the distractions. And also that when you're talking that you speak up um, because um, sometimes we have some timid girls and we have to remind them that it's different than we're sitting around a table. Um, all right, so I have a question here and if you have any ideas, chat, uh, put this in the chat log. Um, the question came, I have a mixed level troop. Any tips on keeping them focused in the chat? All right, so I'll let you guys respond and I will go to the next slide. All right, and we're going to talk about Girl Scouts from Home resources that are um, um, that are being offered by Girl Scouts of Central Maryland. And I'm going to hopefully see Jen Stolte popping up here so that she can talk about this. Okay, I'm moving around, so I guess that means she's coming. I mean, there she is. Very good. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna read the chat. Okay, great. Well, I didn't realize how dark it had gotten in here. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. It's good to be with you to tonight uh, to talk about some of the things that we're doing from uh, Girl Scouts of Central Maryland um, that uh, many of you probably already know about. I'm sure. Um, so let's talk a little bit about some of the, the virtual offerings that we have going on. We have some journey sessions and badge sessions, and you can uh, find these on our website, which we're going to jump over to in a minute, hopefully, uh, so you can see where those are. But these have been uh, since March 16th. We, we started offering that first week uh, one session each day live on Facebook, on our Facebook Live page. And since then, the following week and this week, we're, we're up to offering three um, Facebook Live uh, chat sessions uh, with badges and you know take-home activities as well. And when you are uh, preparing to join, we provide a list of materials that you'll need you know, for the girls that they should have on hand so they can uh, follow along and uh, participate in the activities along with the presenters. And it's okay if you can't make a live session because you can find these on our website, our YouTube channel, Girl Scout Central Maryland. And they're all there recorded so you can uh, watch them over and over again if you'd really like to. So we've had some really great success. Our, our most popular, um, as of the end of last week, was our, our live campfire and sing-along. Over 800 folks turned, tuning in. Um, so girls... Um, from Central Maryland and even from all over the nation were part of that session and all of our other sessions. We've had um, some really great participation. So if you haven't seen it yet, um, check it out. Share it with girls in your troop and, and the families. Um, something that they can, you know, participate in, you know, all day long, three times a day. And so this is what uh, we have on our webpage. It's a, 
a look at, you know, the what we were offering March 30th to April 3rd this week. Uh, so you can see right there the schedule for this week of what's happening. So today's focus was our live outdoor basics for daisies and brownies. Um, and then also for juniors. And tomorrow we have our Cadet Breathe Journey and Junior Get Moving Journey Part 2. So you want to take a look at this uh, that's being uploaded um, before, like right in advance of the next week, so you can see what we're offering. And I want to share something uh, new with you. I'm going to try to share the screen. Let's see. Um, let's see if this works. It, it worked before. Uh, I want to. Okay. Well, it says that there's uh, presentation material already being shared. Um, so I'm going to try to take that over and see if we can do this. Uh, Sylvia, let me know if there's a problem. Okay. Can can you see the website? Excellent. Wonderful. All right. So when you uh, come to our website and our homepage, you want to go to the events page. And here we have in the over on the left-hand side, Girl Scouts at Home. And this is brand new. We just added this feature today. Um, so here we have our, our home landing page for Girl Scouts at Home. And really, it's just talking about how while Girl Scouts may not be meeting in person right now, you know, the, we're still Girl Scouts. You don't stop being a Girl Scout. Uh, so, you know, here's how you keep you can keep engaging. Um, just with all the great things Heather and Denise talked about, about how to do virtual meetings. But uh, if you go over to the girls page, and this is just for the girls, uh, you can uh, see that we have by each of the program levels, we have um, activities listed. So if we open some of these, you can see the outdoor art maker badge and it talks about the you know the overall it gives you an overall highlight of this badge here you'll see one of our videos that we had it was on facebook live so that's there for you and then it talks about everything you need how to um make all the things to go along with this activity so you can look at all the different you know grade levels are very similar so here's under brownies the art creator badge okay. so you definitely want to check this out and you can see it goes all the way down to seniors and the Girl Scout Ambassadors, there was some program coming real soon. So you want to uh, look for that coming soon if you're working with an ambassador troop. I want to go back up here and show you what the volunteer page looks like because we have Girl Scouts at home for volunteers too. Uh, it's just talking about some resources. It mentions these webinars that we're starting. You know, Tonight is the first one, and we have three webinars each week in April. Uh, so that you should have received an email. And I'm sure that's why many of you are here today because you received that email with all of the offerings we have going all month. So again, thank you for being here and um, happy Volunteer Appreciation Month. And thank you for all you do in serving girls and you know, especially during this time working to keep everyone connected and engaged. Okay, also on this page, uh, you'll, there's a link that will take you to the Girl Activity or Girl Scouts at Home for Girls page. And then the last paragraph will take you to GSUSA's website where you can find some more Girl Scouts from Home activities as well. And so I hope you'll check that out and find that helpful. And I re uh, recommend that you continue to check that out because we add things every day. New things are going up, new resources, new ideas. All right. Well, I'm going to stop there, Sylvia, and let you look at the question log, see if there's anything there we can answer. Well, we've had Denise and Heather that have been running the question log for us. Oh, um, they put a lot of really good acti um, ideas out. Um, uh, we had Great. one suggestion um, where we, uh, the leader of the meeting had asked, um, what was something new that you did this week? And so she gave a chance for everyone to come to the table and kind of talk about that. Um, Someone else, um, I think it was Denise said that that they had a scavenger hunt, so they had to leave their computer, go to their house and find an item. And she said, that was really good um, until this one girl ran out and said, uh, they were looking for underwear, I think. I need a pair of underwear, and her mom was having a Bible study. So that was kind of funny, she said. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Yeah. And so um, if you can, can you share the screen back? Because I don't have um, the presentation. <clears throat> Jen. I can't hear you. Um, anyway, so let's see. A lot of people are saying that they're looking forward to reconnecting with girls. And here we go. That. Okay. Well, um, let's see where we are here. 
All right. So there it is. Okay, very good. Um, someone has asked for the list of items for the scavenger hunt. So um, I guess this was Denise's idea. If you want to connect with me, I can definitely share that with everybody um, if you don't have that readily available. All right. Now we're going to talk a little bit about... Um, I guess I should be on screen. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the USA. Um, and so they also have a Girl Scouts from Home resources that they have um, offered. Um, but before we get to the the those resources, there's a lot of um, things that were put out initially. Um, one is how to talk to your child about COVID-19. Um, there's also a great section on the GS USA website that's called Raising Awesome Girls. And um, there's another article that's supporting your troop when you can't meet in per person. And one that may be beneficial for um, those of you that are parents, um, how to make li distance learning work. So that's also part of the, if you go to the GSUSA website, there's a banner up top and um, it'll, it, it has all their COVID-19 resources. And so they just launched, and this, it was funny, we did a webinar last Thursday about that, and I think it was Friday is when this section got launched. And so the Girl Scouts at Home section is here, and it's similar to the one that we have at GSUSA, and I'm going to see if I can walk you through that, uh, share my screen, and... I'm going to see. Do you see that there? It's a GSUSA website? Yes. Okay, very good. All right, so this is the GS Girl Scouts at Home section. And there's a section here. It's um, for those that might not know Girl Scouts that are coming here because they saw a video that was shared. There's some great information that talks all about Girl Scouts and um, what, we're do, what we do and how we're connecting during this time. Um, there's also a section that's for families and parents, and so that there's some exact some information here. Um, here's some of the raising awesome girl things that I was talking about. Um, so if I come here as a parent and I have a fourth grader, I can just come click on here, and it's going to take me through some activities that are available um, for the girls. And so um, some of these have videos with um, book, booklets that you can go through. Here, this one's for Outdoor um, Art Explorer. You can get the official badge booklet and it's free. And um, this is one of the videos that will go with one of the activities there. So this one is Eco Camper. Camper. The video is coming for this, but you can purchase the official badge booklet for this particular one here. And so not all of them have the badge activities with them, but here's a, a good idea that a good idea that you can see what's being available for juniors. Um, <clears throat> there's a section here for troop leaders that, um, and there's a tips for troop leader hub so that you can go and you can find articles um, that might help you like the one that I talked about that was connecting with the um, connecting girls, connecting with your troop. And then we have the section that's here for girls. And again, if, uh, if I happen to be a ninth grader, um, I can come here and see um, about the Girl Scout senior activities. So this gives you an idea of the large amount of information that you can find activities that the girls can do. And um Okay, I'm trying to get the screen back here. All right. All right. All right, so that's what it looks like. And that was a quick... Um, mm, hold on. That was a quick uh, um, look at the um, GSUSA... Um, website and their activities. And I'm waiting for that. Um, there we go. All right. So um, as I said, some have badge packets that are available for download. Uh, others are have um, for purchase. There are videos in each um, in selected areas 
um, for badges. Um, some of that are coming soon. It's as I said, they just put it up like last Friday. So they're adding program content all the time. Um, there's a, in unique information here. There's a calendar, um, and they're going to start offering some virtual live events. And so you can look at the calendar to see what's on board for that um, and how to get and uh, take part in those. Um, and we also walk through that there's special sections for girls. And so um, there's the volunteer section um, that, that we talked about as well. And so I think I skipped ahead here. Um, Girl Scouts for Home from Volunteers. And so um, we're, we're offering, um, as Jen said, we're during the uh, Volunteer Appreciation Month, we're offering lots of activities for you as volunteers. And I didn't put the whole list up here, but just through April 8th, we're having these um, webinars that you can um, uh, join in on. Um, uh, so tomorrow we're going to be talking about Foundational Girl Scouts. Um, April 6th, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the VTK. Um, April 7th is um, for you leaders to, disco to discover your authentic leadership style. And then on April 8th, we're going to have our community programs department come and um, teach some Girl Scout songs. So does anybody have any questions? Like Sylvia, this is Jen. Um, uh -huh. Let's ask if the presenters are on mute. I'm receiving a high pitched um, feedback. Um, there are a lot of background. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay, um, there were some, apparently the scavenger hunt is a hot, 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 chat, hotly chatted about item. And, um, and so there, there's a lot of people talking about that. Um, and then there was some, okay, just some comments about, um, uh, Magnolia said the girls love reconnecting with each other and they say, can we please meet every week? And of course, and she said, of course, it's really great talking to them. Um, all right. Anyway, so does anybody have any questions? Because I see a lot of chatting about the virtual meeting and the scavenger hunt. Uh, do you have any questions for us here? All right, not seeing any. So thank you for um, all you do for the Girl Scouts, for the girls in Girl Scouts of Central Maryland. And um, I wanted just to say thanks for coming tonight. It was really great seeing all the engagement that was happening. Um, I apologize again for that little snafu at the beginning where we had a prior time getting the presentation up. Um, but, um, and it was nice chatting with you. So if you guys think of anything, um, it just always know that Girl Scouts of Central Maryland is here for you. Um, we have people um, working and everyone's working from home. And so if you have questions that come in and you don't, you need, you need answers to um, your first line of defense is to, to write into member care or call into member care. They may be able to answer your question. If not, they'll get it to the person that can. And um, then that person will be able to reach out to you and help solve your question. Um, so I just wanted to, oh, I see a lot of thank yous coming in. Thank you. It's always nice to know that, um, that we're offering items that you guys um, enjoy. So, um, so we'll hopefully we'll see you tomorrow while we'll be talking about the foundations of Girl Scouts. All right. Uh, someone's asking if the slides will be available. Yeah, we'll, we'll be sending out the slides um, to everybody and, and a link to the webinar. All right. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening.